What's happening, guys? Keith here with your September 2nd edition of the Impact Report. So if you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact already, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 225,000 viewers and ranked 112 on Cable's Top 150. This is still lower than their average viewership. However, it is the highest in the last four weeks. Hopefully, once we move out of the summer season, we will see an increase as we move toward fall. Um, I don't know if this week's viewership was impacted by StarCast at all, where thousands of fans showed up to the event prior to All In, which took place last night and seemed to be a huge success. I did, in fact, watch the show. I did enjoy it. Um, hats off to everyone involved, as it really showed how strong the independent wrestling community is right now. So moving over to the YouTube page, uh, we'll look at the top three most viewed videos from this past week's episode of Impact. Number three, Brian Cage wipes out Callahan and OVE. This had 60,000 views. Number two, Tessa wins the Knockouts Championship. That had 126,000 views. And number one, Moose betrays Eddie Edwards. 152,000 views. So a huge Increase from number three to number two with 60,000 views there. Um, so we learned that, I think Josh mentioned it on the Impact teleconference, that on September 14th, the Night of the Dummies, one night only, will premiere on the Global Wrestling Network. Uh, we saw the Bad Intentions, one night only, premiere this past Friday. I have yet to sit down and watch it. Hopefully get to do that soon. But I've heard good things. So, Wrestling Inc. recently posted an article about Joe Hendry where he talked about the freedom Impact has given him along with who he wants to sing a duet with. Uh, he says, One of the cool things about a relationship so far is it's, pretty, it's such a rarity, especially at this level, for Impact to have given me the creative space and freedom on my music videos. With these entrances, all I have to do is show up with a file. You know, I show up with a file, and that's what they're going to play. To have that level of trust of a television product of the quality of Impact Wrestling, to me that speaks volumes about how Impact has seen itself working with talents. When asked about who we would pick a, to sing a duet with on Impact Wrestling, Hendry said that Chris Jericho would be his first choice for many reasons, including Fozzie's undeniable success. Who else can, I, can you say but Chris Jericho? That guy has really been... He's a huge influence for me. He showed that wrestlers can be multi-talented. He's someone I've looked up to. I've already wrestled a lot of wrestlers that I've looked up to, but Chris Jericho is on that list. But if you're asking me that question, I'm going to say Chris Jericho just to get some numbers. So this past week, Austin Aries has moved into the number four spot for combined days as world champion and is closing in fast on number three. Uh, the only other active Impact Wrestling wrestler in the top 10 besides Aries is Eli Drake, and he sits at number 10. Uh, thanks to Element Games for the graphics showing the top 10 world champions with their combined days of reigns. Um, so good stuff for Austin Aries there. He should be, I believe if he holds on to the title, uh, at least until Bound for Glory, he should be at number three, surpassing Bobby Roode. Uh, speaking of Austin Aries, WrestlingEdge.com posts an article about Austin Aries saying that he considers Impact Wrestling to be the promotion for adults while he considers most wrestling for kids. Um, so the article says, Impact World Champion Austin Aries has spent 2018 helping the Impact roster bring the company back from near death. In a recent edition of Keeping It Real with Conan, A-Double spoke with the LAX leader on the differences between the WWE and Impact creatively and why he isn't a fan of most wrestling nowadays. Uh, Aries, who stated before that he felt shackled under the WWE, said that working with Impact Wrestling allows him to express his own ideas on TV. Aries said, What it benefits for a guy like me is they let me fill in the blanks and paint the picture. Then I can go back and give them my ideas of what I'm thinking and whether something is good or if I have some questions. It's really a cool atmosphere. When the topic of other certain promotions came up, Aries, again, said that he isn't a fan of most modern wrestling, stating that it's targeted toward children. There was a time that I really loved pro wrestling, but I'm not a pro wrestling junkie, per se. Most of pro wrestling isn't catered to me. 
I'm not a kid. There are a lot of guys that complain to me about the product, but it's like, well, you're not a kid. It's catered to sell t-shirts and merchandise to kids and their parents. Aries then said that another reason that he appreciates Impact Wrestling, believing that it is aimed toward an older audience. That's why with some of the things we're doing at Impact Wrestling and other places, there are more of a resurgence to more of an adult-oriented version of pro wrestling because that's what was missing for a long time. Maybe there's something we can do at Impact Wrestling that some corporate companies don't want to touch. I think that there's a lot of people that miss that pro wrestling can give them too. So there is that. Aries is not wrong with that statement. So the full card for Impact Wrestling vs. UK at MediaCon has been announced, and this show will stream live next Sunday, September 9th, on Twitch at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, some of the wrestlers in the matches that aren't on the current Impact Wrestling roster are taken from, I believe, the World of Sports Wrestling roster as Impact is utilizing their partnership here. So I'll run down the list of the matches. First, we have the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championship, uh, LAX defends against Fleisch and Storm. We have Lana Austin versus Sue Young, Joe Hendry versus Eli Drake, a barbed wire bat death match with Jimmy Havoc versus Sammy Callahan, uh, Trevor Lee versus Rich Swan versus Matt Seidel, Edwards and Sizem versus Moose and Cruz, Maxted and Robbie X versus McCulksley and Steel. So that should be a good event. Um, hopefully they have a crazy crowd like the UK usually brings. Um, and like I said, that will be live next Sunday on Twitch at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, Brian Cage was on this week's Impact Wrestling Media teleconference. Uh, I'll give a rundown on what was talked about there. Uh, he was first asked about Option C that Austin Aries created. Uh, however, he says that he wants to make the X Division Championship on par with the world title. He says there is so much great X Division talent that they can bring the belt back to its glory days. Uh, he talks about his workout routine and his diet, uh, which includes working out six days a week and eating dozens of egg whites a day. He's asked about his relationship with Chris Canyon and how Canyon trusted him with the Mortis gimmick. He says that his friendship motivated him. He was good and giving and doesn't get enough credit for what he did for so many people's careers. When he first did the Mortis gimmick, Brian Cage that is, on the indies, Chris gave him a call and told him to keep doing it. Uh, Brian says that Shawn Michaels and Scott Hall were originally the wrestlers that inspired him to become a pro wrestler. Uh, later on, his big Big influences were the three Chris's, Chris Candido, Chris Benoit, and Chris Jericho. His dream opponent is AJ Styles. Uh, he talks about owning hedgehogs. He owned a male one named Sonic who passed away years ago, and he currently owns a female one named Pepper Ann. Uh, I guess he said that he see saw a lot of people on YouTube owning hedgehogs, and no one named it Sonic, so he had to own one and call it Sonic. Uh, he says he's a huge Resident Evil fan, and he can't wait for the remake of Resident Evil 2. Uh, he says that it is his favorite video game. Uh, he was big into skateboarding and still can do some tricks. He's asked if he has any other hidden talents. He says he is really good at fingerboarding and owns a ton of them. Uh, he's asked if he would like to, or who on the Impact roster he would like to see attempt skateboarding. And he says he would love to see Falaba and KM attempt it. Uh, he's asked about wrestling games, and he says WCW vs. NWO Revenge has the most nostalgic value to him. Uh, he's asked who on the Impact roster would be would give him his toughest match, and he says Moose would, as they have yet to lace up boots against each other in Impact Wrestling. I'm sure that is a match we will get in the future. Um, he is asked if there is a match that he would he wanted to wrestle that he hasn't before. He says he would love to have an old school cage match with the blue steel cage. And he ends the call by hyping his match with Phoenix from this past week's episode of impact. Um, he was also a guest Brian cage. That is on the Andre Corbiel show recently. I'll leave a link in the comment section below and pin it. So you guys can check that out. Um, that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. Uh, we have a small preview for next week's episode of Impact. Um, the matches announced so far are OVE versus Trey Miguel, Ace Austin, and Zachary Wentz. Uh, Sue Young gets her rematch against Tessa Blanchard for the Knockouts Championship. 
uh, Joe Hendry and Grado versus the Desi Hit Squad, and we find out why Moose turned his back on Eddie Edwards. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking out my show, and I will see you guys back on Friday for another Impact Wrestling review. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.